Sorry, we have to leave it there. The judge at the trial of David Duckenfield told the jury to put their emotions aside in reaching their verdict today. An incredibly tough challenge against that backdrop of the worst stadium disaster in the country's history and that long fight for the truth which followed it. Yes, our correspondent Anne O'Connor now looks back at the case and why the jury chose to acquit the man at the centre of it all. David Duckenfield's defence says he's always been unfairly targeted for the blame for Hillsborough. He'd been forced to deal with a disaster that had been bound to happen for years. Newly promoted, he had never been match commander as he briefed officers on the morning of the disaster. Within hours, those officers couldn't cope with the chaos of the badly designed Leppings Lane turnstiles at a ground with an out-of-date safety certificate and exaggerated figures for how many fans it could hold. The new commander was relying on more experienced officers to take decisions. He said he didn't know where fans would go when he ordered Gate C opened. He didn't think to close the tunnel to already packed pens. David Duckenfield froze, overwhelmed and out of his depth. And as the disaster unfolded, Mr Duckenfield lied that fans were the ones who forced the gate. Within a month, he was back in charge at Hillsborough. Obviously, no one, no police officer, including myself, can return to Sheffield Wednesday ground without a touch of sadness. Tarpaulin, covering the place where dozens died. Lord Justice Taylor's inquiry found the main reason for the disaster was that the South Yorkshire force simply lost control. But in 1990, the Director of Public Prosecutions decided no one would face any criminal charges. Yes, I'm relieved at this decision, which has lifted a great weight off my mind. There is, however, nothing further which I can say at this time, as there are still disciplinary proceedings pending against me. He retired, suffering from stress and depression. Disciplinary proceedings were dropped, but the questions continued as he started a new life on the Mr. South Coast. Field. I'd like to talk to you about what was described as your gross mismanagement at Hillsborough. I don't wish to talk to you, Mr Cook. No disrespect to you. Six years later, David Duckenfield was brought to court in a private manslaughter prosecution by relatives. The jury failed to reach a verdict. The events of April 1989 have taken the toll on David and his family. David has been suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder for many years and the pressure created by the trial has exacerbated this condition. And then, in 2015, at new inquests in Warrington, he apologised profusely to the families, saying he deeply regretted lying and adding he wasn't up to the job. The jury concluded 96 Liverpool fans had been unlawfully killed at Hillsborough. I express my profound sympathies for the deceased and their families. I also apologise for the mistakes that I had made. There is a full transcript of the evidence that I gave at Warrington and I'm sure that you understand my present position. It would not be appropriate for me to say anything more whilst the IPCC is still investigating and that's all I have to say. At two trials this year, his defence said David Duckenfield had been like a captain given a ship that was already sinking. Parts of the ground were a death trap. He hadn't committed gross negligence manslaughter. The first jury couldn't decide, but this one has found him not guilty. After what David Duckenfield's barrister called the most heartbreaking case to come before an English court. Anne O'Connor, ITV News. Well, while the trial was taking place in Preston, for some of the relatives who live on Merseyside, there was a live feed of proceedings to the Cunard building in Liverpool. For many of them, it became their second home as they watched the case unfold day after day. At the end of it all today, it was there. They held their news conference and it's there that we join our correspondent, Anne O'Connor. Anne. Yes, Lucy, the relatives have been coming here for this second trial for 31 days over six weeks. They've been campaigning over Hillsborough, of course, for almost 31 years. And we're joined tonight by the chair of the Hillsborough Family Support Group, Margaret Aspinall. You lost your son, James, at Hillsborough. What was today like? It was the end of a very long fight for you. What was it like in that tense moment? Devastating. Obviously, all the families were devastated. Um, 
you know, 96 people unlawfully killed and yet nobody's been held to account for them unlawfully killed. And the question I'd like to ask, well, if Mr Duckenfield is not guilty, please tell me who is guilty of killing 96 people. You must feel now, though, that you've done everything you can. Yeah, well, it's been nearly 31 years of campaigning. Uh, it's been a hard struggle for the families. Um, it's just devastating today, Ed. What I'm saddened at, at a system within this country that can come out with that verdict today, I find that so morally wrong and a disgrace to this nation because 96 were unlawfully killed, we've proven that. Fans played no part in it whatsoever. They were exonerated, rightly so, absolutely pleased with that decision. But today, it, it just knocked us all right back because, as I said, who unlawfully killed the 96? We know who killed the 96. The world at large knows. We're joined also by Irene McGlone. You lost your husband, Alan, at Hillsborough. Irene, you were one of those quietly sobbing. There were some shouting, some very angry, but you were just very quiet, sobbing. How did you feel? Today felt worse than the 15th of April itself to me because I couldn't control my sobs. But on the 15th of April, 89, I didn't cry because I was shocked. It was a real shock to you. You had hoped, obviously, for other, other verdicts. Um, I wasn't shocked that we, he, we, he was found not guilty because it said all along yeah. he's going to get away with it this time because we just knew. Um, let me bring in Elkin Abramson, a solicitor who's acted on behalf of many of the families over lots and lots of years. Elkin, you want to see changes to the law in terms of families who cope with disasters. Tell us about that. There's something desperately wrong with a system that takes over 30 years and ends up with two completely inconsistent results. We have to remember that the inquest jury found Mr Duckenfield guilty of unlawful killing. Now we have a criminal jury that said the opposite. Where does that leave the families? Where does that leave the public? We need to take a long, hard look in the mirror as lawyers and as government officials to see why the system is failing families, especially in mass disasters, and what we can do to change it. All of you, thank you very much for being here tonight, today. It's been a really difficult day for all of you, so thank you for your time. From the Cunard building, back to you. And thank you. Well, the new inquests and new investigations followed the report of the Hillsborough Independent Panel, and that in turn led to Operation Resolve, that six-year investigation that cost £60 million, and it's resulted in one person being fined over health and safety. Yes, our cameras went behind the scenes to look at the often secretive work of Operation Resolve and to examine one of the largest criminal inquiries in British legal history. In an unremarkable building on the edge of Warrington lie the records of a disaster. 58 miles and 30 years lie between the exhibits room and the seat of the tragedy. Hillsborough has become one of the UK's most documented incidents and here, hundreds of thousands of accounts, correspondence and reports have been poured over in detail. This is like starting a book, a novel at page 90. Dave's a seasoned detective from Manchester. He's one of hundreds of people brought in to look at the disaster with fresh eyes. Over the last few years, he's had to find and painstakingly read many of these documents to decide which had a direct bearing on the criminal case. Just how big is this, Dave? Well, it's clearly one of the biggest, largest inquiries in British history. The, the incident in itself, um, you know, you, there's, it's unprecedented. And because of the time it's taken over the years, we've ended up 30 years later trying to make some sense out of it. Investigators sent 15 files on people and organisations to prosecutors. Yet years of work has yielded just one conviction, a fine for a health and safety offence. It's my responsibility to understand who was in potentially culpable of a criminal offence on that day. I've done that by providing the evidence to the CBS. Has it been worth it? It has been worth it. It's um, a lot of time and effort gone into it. The families and the 96 deceased are at the centre of this. It has to be worth it for those 96 people who lost their lives on that day. 
Throughout the home of Operation Resolve, there is a constant reminder of why they're here. The team have had to navigate a quarter of a million negatives, photographs and slides. 22,000 have been digitised and organised. It's allowed investigators to zoom in and find people previously unseen. Technology has played a massive part in this. I mean, you know, back in 1989, investigators just didn't have the, the equipment. You know, they had a photograph or a, they had a negative and that was it. And the standards of what they could produce from that were quite poor. As opposed to now, we can do so much more with things. A picture paints a thousand words and, and this surely does that. This investigation has been long and expensive. It has answered many questions that have been left hanging for 30 years. But tonight, some are still asking, has it all been worth it? A, rem a reminder of our main news tonight. David Duckinfield, the Hillsborough match commander, has been cleared of the gross negligence manslaughter of 95 people. Yeah, we can cross back to our Hillsborough correspondent, to Andy Bonner, now in Preston. Andy, you have been following this case. What happens next for the families? Well, I think, first of all, the families, Lucy, will be taking stock after all this has been a 30-year campaign to hold someone to account for the disaster. We heard Chrissy Burke ask the judge earlier who is responsible then for her father's death. Jenny Hicks described those 30 years as a national disgrace. She doesn't want to feel bitter about it. They know that they have done all they can, but it does appear now that the families of the Hillsborough victims have exhausted all their options. Andy, thank you. And that's it on the night that more than 30 years after the Hillsborough disaster, David Duckenfield, the match commander all those years ago, was cleared of the gross negligence manslaughter of 95 Liverpool fans. In a statement, his lawyer said Mr Duckenfield's thoughts are with the families. The families want us to pause tonight to remember those who died and also to remember an inquest found they were all unlawfully killed. In the days, weeks and years to come, that's what they want us to remember. Good night. Good night.